everyone and welcome. Thank you for joining me for the last part of the adventure of Mr. Fox, actually fantastic Mr. Fox. So if you've got the book and if you want to read along, I'm going to start on uh, chapter 16 called The Woman. Quick, said Mr. Fox, hide. He and Badger and the smallest fox jumped onto a shelf and crouched behind a row of big cider jars. Peering around the jars, they saw a huge woman coming down into the cellar. At the foot of the steps, the woman paused, looking to right and left. Then she turned and headed straight for the place where Mr. Fox and Badger and the smallest fox were hiding. She stopped right in front of them. The only thing between her and them was a row of cider jars. She was so close, Mr. Fox could hear the sound of her breathing. Peeping through the crack between two bottles, he noticed that she carried a pin rolling pin in one hand. How many will you want this time, Mrs. Bean? The woman shouted. And from the top of the steps, the other voice called back, bring up two or three jars? He drank four yesterday, Mrs. Bean. Yeah, but he won't want that many today because he's not going to be up there for more than a few hours longer. He says the fox is bound to make a run for it this morning. It can't possibly stay down that hole another day without food. The woman in the cellar reached out and lifted a jar of cider from the shelf. The jar she took was next but one to the jar behind which Mr. Fox was crouching. We can see here, Mr. Fox crouched just behind the jars and the big woman getting a jar of cider. I'd be glad when the rotten brute is killed and strung up on the front porch, she called out. And by the way, Mrs. Bean, your husband promised I could have the tail as a souvenir. The tail's been all shot to pieces, said the voice from upstairs. Didn't you know that? You mean it's ruined? Of course it's ruined. They shot the tail, but Mr. Fox. Oh, heck, said the big woman. I did so want that tail. Oh, you can have the head instead, Mabel. You can get it stuff and hang it onto your bedroom wall. Hurry up now with that cider. Yes, ma'am, I'm coming, said the big woman. And she took a second jar from the shelf. If she takes one more, she'll see us thought Mr. Fox. He could feel the smallest fox body pressed tightly against his own, quivering with excitement. Will two be enough, Mrs. Bean, or shall I take three? My goodness, Mabel, I don't care, as long as you get a move on. Ah, then two it is, said the huge woman, speaking to herself now. He drinks too much anyway. Carrying a jar in each hand and with a rolling pin tucked under one arm, she walked away across the cellar. At the foot of the steps, she paused and looked around, sniffing the air. <laughs> There's rats down here again, Mrs. Bean. I can smell them. Ah, then poison them, woman, poison them. You know where the poison's kept? Yes, ma'am, Mabel said. She climbed slowly out of sight of the steps. The door slammed. Quick, said Mr. Fox, grab a jar each and run for it. Rat stood on his high shelf and shrieked. What did I tell you? You nearly got nabbed, didn't you? You nearly gave, gave the game away. You keep, out the, you keep out of here from now on. I don't want you around. This is my place. You, said Mr. Fox, are going to be poisoned. Not puppy cop, said Rat. I sit up here and watch her putting the stuff down. She'll never get me. Mr. Fox and Badger and the smallest fox ran across the cellar, clutching a gallon jar each. Goodbye, rat, they called out as they disappeared through the hole in the wall. Thanks for the lovely cider. Thieves, screeched rat, robbers, bandit, burglars. Back in the tunnel, they paused so that Mr. Fox could break up the hole in the wall. He was humming to himself as he put the bricks back in place. I can still take that glorious cider, he said. What an impudent fellow Rat is. Ah, he has bad manners, Badger said. All rats have bad manners. 
I've never met a polite rat yet. And he drinks too much, said Fox, putting the last brick in place. There we are. Now, home to the fizz. They grabbed their jars of cider and off they went. Mr. Fox was in front, the smallest fox came next and Badger last. Along the tunnel they flew, past the turning that led to Bun's mighty storehouse, past Poggy's chicken house number one, and then up the long home stretched toward the place where they knew Mrs. Fox would be waiting. Keep it up, my darling, shouted Mr. Fox. We'll soon be there. Think that's waiting for us at the other end. And just think what we're bringing home with us. They ought to cheer up poor Mrs. Fox. Mr. Fox sang a little song as he ran. Home again, swiftly I glide, back to my beautiful bride. She'll not feel so rotten as soon as she's gotten some cider inside her inside. Then Badger joined in. Oh, poor Mrs. Badger, he cried, so hungry she very near died. But she'll not feel so hollow if only she'll swallow some cider inside her inside. They were still singing as they rounded the final corner and burst in upon the most wonderful and amazing sight any of them had ever seen. The feast was just beginning. A large dining room had been hollowed out of the earth and in the middle of it, seated around a huge table were no less than 29 animals. They were Mrs. Fox and three small foxes, Mrs. Badger and three small badgers, Mole and Mrs. Mole and four small smalls, four small moles, rabbits and Mrs. Rabbit and five small rabbits, Weasel and Mrs. Weasel and six small weasels. The table was covered with chickens and ducks and geese and hams and bacon and everyone was tucking into the lovely food. My darling, cried Mrs. Fox, jumping up and hugging Mr. Fox. We couldn't wait. Please forgive us. Then she hugged the smallest fox and Mrs. Badger hugged Badger and everyone hugged everyone else. Amid shouts of joy, the great jars of cider were placed upon the table and Mr. Fox and Badger and the smallest fox sat down with the others. You must remember no one had eaten a thing for several days. They were ravenous. So for a while, there was no conversation at all. There was only the sound of crunching and chewing as the animals attacked the succulent fruit. At last, Badger stood up. He raised his glass of cider and called out, a toast. I want you all to stand and drink a toast to our dear friend, what saved our lives this day, Mr. Fox. To Mr. Fox, they all shouted, standing up and raising their glasses. To Mr. Fox, long may he live. Then Mrs. Fox got shyly to her feet and said, I don't want to make a speech. I just want to say one thing and it is this. My husband is a fantastic fox. Everyone clapped and cheered. Then Mr. Fox himself stood up. This delicious meal, he began. Then he stopped. In the silence that followed, he let fly a tremendous pet. There was laughter and more clapping. This delicious meal, my friend, he went on, is by courtesy of Miss Mr. Boggies, Buns and Beans, more cheering and laughter. And I hope you have enjoyed it as much as I have. He let fly another colossal patch. Better out than in, said Badger. Thank you, said Mr. Fox, grinning usually. But now, my friend, let's be serious. Let us think of tomorrow and the next day and the days after that. If we go out, we will be killed, right? Right, they shouted. We'll be short before we've gone a yard, said Badger. Exactly, said Mr. Fox. But who wants to go out anyway? Let me ask them. We are all diggers, every one of us. We hate the outside. The outside is full of enemies. We only go out because we have to, to get food for our families. But now, my friends, we have an entirely new setup. We have a safe tunnel leading to three of the finest stores in the world. We do indeed, said Badgers. I've seen them. And you know what this means, said Mr. Fox? It means that none of us need ever go out into the open again. And there was a buzz of excitement around the table. 
I therefore invite you all, Mr. Fox went on, to stay here with me forever. Forever, they cried. My goodness, how marvelous. And Rabbit said to Mrs. Rabbit, my dear, just think, we're never going to be shot at again in our lives. We will make, said Mr. Fox, a little underground village with streets and houses on each side, separate houses for badgers and moles and rabbits and weasels and foxes. And every day I will go shopping for you all. And every day we will eat like kings. The cheering that followed this speech went on for many minutes. Outside the fox hall, Boggies and Buns and Bean sat beside their tents with their guns on their laps. It was beginning to rain. Water was trickling down the necks of the three men and into their shoes. He won't stay down there much longer now, Boggy said. Well, the brute must be famished, Bun said. That's right, Bean said. He'll be making a dash for it any moment. Keep your guns handy. They sat here by the hall, waiting for the fox to come out. And so far as I know, they are still waiting. And this is the end of the story. Thank you for spending your time with me and keep reading and get into your reading challenge. Thank you, everyone. Bye.